Hey guys, in this video, we're just gonna have some fun with physics and create some swinging rope objects, as well as a bouncy rope bridge. These are pretty easy to set up and they can add a lot of life and interactivity into your game. And they can be particularly fun when you have certain game mechanics that interact with them. Ready? Let's go. So we're gonna start off with one of these rope objects and there's two very different ways to approach this and they each have their pros and cons. So I'll show you both and then we'll create a rope bridge as well. And we're gonna make both because they both use just one very simple physics component and you can do quite a lot of stuff with this. So the first method I'm gonna show you is made up of multiple sprites stuck closely together. So let's create a new game object called ball and chain. And as a child of that, create another game object called chain1. So for that, I'm going to add a sprite renderer and add my little chain sprite here. I'm also going to add a capsule collider 2D and shape it around the sprite. I'm also just going to scale this down a little bit. Next, I'm going to add a hinge joint 2D, and this is automatically going to go ahead and add a rigid body as well. So we need to think about this logically because this literally will make a chain of sprites that are attached together with a bunch of hinges. So we definitely don't want the hinge in the center, we want it at the top, so we can just drag this up here. Okay, so now let's duplicate until we have the length we want. F2 is a renaming shortcut by the way for Windows as well as in Unity. And just for fun on this one, I'm going to add a ball at the bottom. So new game object, and let's add a sprite renderer and get it positioned. And let's add a circle collider 2D as well as a hinge joint 2D. And again, let's move the anchor position so that it's at the top. So working from the bottom up, each hinge joint needs a rigid body to connect to. So attach the one above, okay? So for ball, we'll attach chain six, and on chain six, we'll attach chain five, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to chain one. And what do we add to chain one? Well, that depends on what you want. If you want this to remain stationary, we can just add a kinematic rigid body to the parent object and drag that in. And you can see, that this is working and interacting really nicely with our player. But as soon as I try to move this object, everything completely falls apart. So instead, let's get rid of this rigid body on the parent object and instead create one new game object called anchor and let's move it to the top. So it's important to make sure that chain one and anchor have the exact same position. And if they don't, you can just copy the position from chain one and paste it to the anchor. So let's go ahead and add a hinge joint 2D to this one as well and move the anchor position to the top. And this will have nothing connected to the rigid body, okay? We're leaving this empty. But now back in chain one, let's go ahead and add the anchor's rigid body to that hinge joint and deselect the auto configure connected anchor or we're going to have some problems. Now if we play, you can see it's working just as well as it was before, except now, we're also able to grab the anchor object and move it around and it's performing beautifully. So this is probably a better option if you want this to be attached to a moving game object. So that was method one where we were connecting individual pieces together. And functionally, this one is better, okay? If you want physics objects interacting with players or if you want certain mechanics that interact with stuff, then this is probably the way to go. And you can see it really doesn't look too bad either with these sprites. Although, if I bring this one in, it looks awful because you can see all the little spaces between the pieces, right? So for this, it really does depend on what kind of sprites you're working with. But for something that can consistently look a lot better, I'll show you the second approach, which is to have one sprite that will move using bones. So I have just this white line here and its sprite mode is set to single. And if I go into the sprite editor, we're going to want to go over here and select the skinning editor. And if that's not an option for you, then you're probably missing a package and I think it's the 2D animation package that you'd be missing. So you can double click to select our line and we're just going to create bone and click and drag all the way from the top to the bottom and right click to exit this mode. And if you set them up a little bit unevenly, you can click edit bone and just drag them around until you're happy. Next, let's click on auto geometry and ensure that the weights option is selected and click generate. 
this is automatically going to weight paint your spray. You can see each colored area corresponds to that same colored bone. And to see how it looks, you can rotate them around if you want here. So let's go ahead and click apply. And now let's drag that sprite into our scene. And you can see it looks like just a normal sprite right now, but to get the bones in there, go ahead and add a sprite skin component and click create bones. Now all the bones will be showing up. And if we hold alt and expand this, it's gonna show us every single child object here and you can see that they're all parented to the one above it. I don't want that, so let's just undo that by selecting all of them and drag them onto the parent object. So just like the last one, let's add an anchor object and move it up to the top and copy and paste the position of bone one to the anchor object. Now let's go ahead and select all of them, including the anchor and add a hinge joint 2D. Now what's nice about doing it this way is the connected anchor will be positioned at the top of the bone, which is exactly what we want. So we're already good on that front. So let's just work from the bottom up again and add the rigid body from the object above all the way to anchor where we assign nothing. And again, on bone one, let's deselect the auto configure connected anchor so it'll just always stay attached to the anchor even when it's moving. And you can see that's working nicely. And you can really fine tune the control of this with your mass on the rigid bodies and your angle limits. These are swinging pretty wildly, so for the anchor, I'll leave it limitless in case we want it to swing all the way around. But for the rest, I might limit it from minus 50 to 50. And let's make sure that we select use limits here. And that's behaving a lot better now. So remember I said this one is a bit less functional and more prone to breaking. So if we add capsule colliders to all of the bones, you can see it actually looks pretty good until my player dashes into it. These ones are a lot less prone to breaking. So you see what I mean, more functional, more pretty. Now I found that I was able to stabilize them both even more by adding more mass to each individual rigid body. So you definitely want to play around with those values a little bit until it's looking and feeling and behaving right. Also, if we create a new game object called ball and chain bone and drag this in there and add a new circle in there, with a circle collider 2D and a hinge joint 2D, and attach bone 13 to this and move the anchor up and maybe give it a little bit more mass and some higher gravity and remove all of these colliders. Now you kind of get the best of both. You just don't interact with the rope anymore, right? So what you want to do ultimately depends on what you want. But I like this, I think it's pretty fun. Next, let's make a bridge. So create a new game object called bridge and let's position it at the edge here. And let's create a new child game object called starting anchor and position it slightly inside here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a static rigid body to that. Now let's add our first plank. I'll make it a square and I'm going to go ahead and shape it accordingly. And I'm going to add a capsule collider 2D and by changing this to horizontal, it'll make it fit properly. And I'm going to add a hinge joint 2D as well and move the anchor over to the side that's closest to the anchor. Now just go ahead and duplicate until you reach the other side. And I'm really trying to fit one plank per square on the grid here. And if you want to either enable or disable the grid, you can click this button up here. Now, once we reach the end, you can duplicate your last plank one more time and put it inside our edge here. And you can go ahead and get rid of the sprite renderer and the capsule collider. And be sure to change this rigid body to static as well, or gravity is gonna make this side fall to the ground. Now, just like the others, we're gonna start from the bottom and connect the rigid body from the object above into the hinge joint. Let's test. There you go. And if you prefer a tighter bridge, you can just add more mass to each individual plank. And there you can see this one's a whole lot tighter. I hope this gave you some inspiration for your games. I feel like little physics interactions like this can add quite a lot. They obviously come with a bit of performance overhead, so don't go too nuts with this, but they are a lot of fun to play around with and can breathe a whole lot of life into your scene if used wisely. 
Be sure to give this video a like if you liked it, and my patrons get access to the source files of every single tutorial ever made on this channel, so if that interests you, then head on over to our Patreon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yondok, Christopher Nichols, Zondra Kessler, Fontaine Waite, Brainwaves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, and Ian Oral, as well as our Early Access patrons, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Jan, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestes, Jude Greaves, Felipe Gomez dos Santos, Ober, Francesco Latamata, Bill Guo, Alon on Mars, Alex Friedman, Danny Rathliff, Arne Nash Schoenweg, Neil, Ben Kerberger, John Wisman, Lucky Tales, Aiden Serve, Adarsh Kumar, and Merler. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.